there everyone! In my last video, a lot of you requested that I make a specific video dedicated towards a comparison of Notion and Obsidian. If you haven't seen my video on Obsidian for students, please do check it out. I also got a few extra questions about Rome, so I included that in the mix as well. I have done a lot of research for this video and compiled all the information I had access to so that you all can get the most concise knowledge. I really hope that it helps some of you out. As usual, you can find timestamps for this video in the description below, and I really do value your time, so I'm going to give you an upfront short summary of the make it or break it points that helped me decide which app to use and which app is best for each type of student. If you're interested to find out more, please watch the rest of the video. So here's a quick rundown of what I will be discussing in the rest of this video. Deciding on a note-taking app all depends on what works best for you. Fundamentally, all three of these apps were made for different purposes and are thus essentially extremely different. I'm covering the note-taking aspect, but the rest of the apps aren't exactly comparable. I would say that it seems like Notion has the smallest learning curve and its interface seems to be extremely neat and simple to use. Everything is pretty self-explanatory and you probably won't need to scour the internet for tutorials on how to use it. If you don't need a graph view, bi-directional linking, or anything extremely complex, Notion is probably the way to go for you. If you happen to work in Teams, Notion seems to have the best group work set up at the moment as well, and it's great for taking class notes, reading notes, etc., and also has a great app for your phone or your tablet. Roam Research is great because it has a beautiful graph view with bi-directional linking to connect your thoughts and the ability to link to blocks of content and markdown. It also has tagging features and varieties of transclusion or toggling. In combination, Roam is extremely powerful. You have a lot of freedom in terms of designing your content, and I've read that a lot of people are able to spend more time creating instead of worrying about other factors like making your notes pretty. You get straight to producing and writing down your thoughts, and there's no mental friction involved. It makes working a lot more enjoyable. And Rome works best for people who are writing a research paper or a book, and is constantly needing to link ideas and compile information. If that's you, definitely consider using Rome. Unfortunately though, Rome does not have a mobile app, although I do believe that they are working on developing that at the moment. I discuss Obsidian in much more depth in my student overview of the app, which I will put in a card on screen right now that you can go to. The link is also in the description. Obsidian, on the surface, is very similar to Rome and also has great bi-directional linking features. One of the issues with their linking is that you cannot link to blocks of information like you can on Rome, but you are able to link to headings, which is quite similar. Another problem is that you aren't able to zoom in on specific blocks either like you can on Rome. That feature alone makes a huge difference for some people, so if that's you, make sure to stick with Rome instead. Data on Obsidian is stored locally on your hard drive instead of through the cloud like with Notion and Rome, although you can link to it with Google Drive or OneDrive or really any other cloud storage option. If price is important to you, Obsidian is completely free at the base level and is currently up in the air whether or not Rome will be adding a free tier to their service, so in more detail there's actually quite a few differences between Rome and Obsidian, but I'll dive into that later in this video. I have been using Notion for a large amount of my schoolwork and life management for the past year. The interface is really smooth and as a student who is constantly on the go, the great benefit of having mobile and tablet apps really made me stick with it. So some of the main pros for Notion include it's great team integration. So from what I've seen, it seems that most people in the note-taking and organization realm all greatly appreciate the team collaboration aspects of Notion. It seems to be the main winner in that respect, so if that's something that you value, you should probably try Notion out. Another pro of Notion is its general layout. Visually, Notion has so many options, from columns to tables to being able to highlight your notes, Notion has the simplest and cleanest design out of these three apps. You don't need to worry about how your notes will look, since you can spend so much time customizing their appearance. For some though, this can also be a con as well. I can touch on that a little bit later. A major pro of Notion is its easy learning curve. Everything is really easy to manage, so as long as you are generally comfortable with the computer, you probably won't need to be studying much about the app before getting straight to using it. Another pro is its block organization structure and toggling. 
By being able to toggle blocks, Notion is a great tool for students to use in terms of active recall. You can type questions into a block and then hide the answers under the toggle to test yourself. It's also really easy to move around blocks, so that's a great plus as well. In terms of the cons of Notion, I think that the main one that stands out is its inability to link ideas. You can make pages within folders and make subpages within those pages, but there's no way to link back between the subpages. As I said earlier, some people also think that the customizability of your content can be a con as well. Since you have so many options to organize your work with pretty headings, tables, bullets, etc., you spend less time actually doing your work than the time you spend decorating your note page. So I have not personally spent a lot of time with Rome Research, but I have gathered a lot of information about the app through others who are regular users of Rome, so hopefully you will all still find this to be helpful. It seems that one of the main pros for Rome is that it guides the natural process of your brain. In other words, by providing the abilities of bidirectional linking, you are mimicking the way that your brain organizes thoughts. This can help you astronomically while you are putting together research ideas. Another pro is that Rome allows for the toggling factor or transclusion method of Notion, but in conjunction with the bidirectional linking. So you are able to link together blocks of information to refer to different ideas throughout different pages. You can also zoom into these blocks of information so that one block fills up your whole screen and you are no longer distracted by the other blocks of that same original parent note file. A very important advantage of Rome is the ability to have unlinked references. Rome allows you to open up a page of your links and mentions, but it is specifically unique in that it also automatically finds all of the references to a specific idea that you never linked and provides a page for that as well. This way, you can look back at older notes and connect those ideas with new ones. Another point that a lot of people love about Rome is its ability to get you to fuel your creative juices. So what I mean by that is Rome's interface encourages you to just jot down any ideas very quickly. Instead of wasting your time trying to make your notes pretty, you are more likely to be creative and productive if you just get straight to work. I have read so many posts about how Rome has allowed people to work more effectively and it's cleared their minds. I personally also really enjoy the bullet point lines that follow your notes on Rome. It really makes it easier on your eyes, and this is something that Obsidian doesn't have at the moment. A great feature of Rome is its graph overview. This allows you to see a big picture connection of all of your ideas, and it is absolutely game changing. Here are some of the cons for Rome. The first is that Rome does not have any mobile app. So this is especially a struggle for students who might not want to bring their laptops with them everywhere. You can still open the page on your web browser through your phone, but it just doesn't look as nice as the Notion app. Another issue is the integration of tables and other visual charts on Rome. These features don't seem to be incorporated as nicely as they are on Notion, so you should definitely make note of that. The other issue is that the starting price for Rome will be $15 a month or $7.50 for students, which is a pretty hefty responsibility. Both Notion and Obsidian are free at the basic level. You can take a look at my Obsidian overview video if you want to learn more about Obsidian, but here I'll go over a few of the main pros and cons for comparison purposes. So let's discuss Obsidian's pros. One of the pros is that you also have the bi-directional linking of Rome. It works very similarly to Rome as well. You can also link to specific headings within your note, and although this isn't exactly the same as linking to a full block in Rome, it is quite similar in concept. You also aren't losing the great graph view feature either. And you have great multitasking features and are able to open everything at once, something very similar to the sidebar feature on Rome. You have access to multiple plugins, such as an audio recorder and smooth embedding of media. All of your data is safely stored on your hard drive and you are able to sync it to the cloud if you'd like, depending on your own preferences. Another really great thing is that the developers are there at your disposition. The Obsidian team seems to be working extremely hard on new features and they have been responding really well to customer feedback. They have a forums page where they gather opinions of their users and reflect it in their work. And this is really great because it means that the app will constantly be growing and improving based on your input and what you want to see them add. There's definitely a few cons to Obsidian as well. And one of the big issues is the way that you view all instances of a link. 
So with Roam, you are able to have a page where you can see all links linked to a specific page, including unlinked references. On Obsidian, the backlinks bar just isn't as pretty and as aesthetically pleasing, although you definitely are able to view them. A bigger problem is that you cannot zoom into blocks like you are able to in Roam, meaning that you must view the whole page at once. Again, there's definitely more to all of these apps than just these points alone, and please check out my video on Obsidian to learn more. So in the conclusion of this video, I think it's important to note that I am a university student and have only looked so far into these apps in terms of maximizing my learning and retention for my studies. There are many great options out there from people who are using these apps from a non-student perspective, and I encourage you all to consider them as well. If you have thoughts on these apps too, please let me know what you think in the comments. Looking towards the future, it seems that Notion seems to have the advantage as a note-taking app for students. I have also heard a lot of news that it would probably be the easiest for Notion to include what Rome and Obsidian have, rather than the other way around. I think that if Notion were able to incorporate bi-directional linking along with its block structure, most Rome and Obsidian users would certainly have to take a better look at it. Hopefully we hear more about that possible development in the future. I hope I was able to help you all decide which app to use, or at least give you a better idea of all of them. I'd be happy to offer more insight in the comments if you have more questions. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could leave me a like and a comment. Please also subscribe if you would like to see more of my videos, and I'll be making a video regarding taking nonfiction book notes on Obsidian in the very near future, along with any other requests I receive. If you have a suggestion, please don't hesitate to leave it down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and I hope I see you all in the next video.